I'm Zeno, and this video will examine how Bancor version 3 performs trades. In the cryptocurrency space, decentralized exchanges, DEXs, are places that users can go to trade one cryptocurrency for another. These trades are made through liquidity provided by other users. This is why they're called decentralized exchanges. Anyone can provide the money, no one individual controls the vault, and anyone can trade using that money. The idea that anyone can participate in the protocol, according to the rules set by the protocol, is why we call decentralized exchanges permissionless. Bancor, in all its forms, is a decentralized permissionless exchange. In order for trades to be made on a DEX, there must first be liquidity. This liquidity is provided by users who charge traders a percentage fee for using their capital to make swaps. The lower the fee, the more attractive the pool, and so the market decides what a fair swap rate is. At the Bancor DAO, we have been experimenting with what the right fee schedule is for some time, and we adapt to shifts in the market. When users provide liquidity to Bancor, they only need to provide one asset, and when you stake that asset, Bancor provides you with a receipt which guarantees 100% of your deposit. The liquidity provided by holders is then paired with the Bancor Network Token, BNT, and this process repeats for each deposit. All assets on Bancor are matched with BNT. We call this the Omnipool. So what we've done to reorganize this is basically to suck the BNT out of all of those pools and amass it together in one central location. Then the pools actually become sort of this, we, we visualize it as an orbit around the BNT rather than a collection of buckets of different tokens. And so the Omnipool is a central pool that contains all of the tokens of the Bancor network, including the BNT, rather than discrete liquidity pools that contain their own tokens. One of the massive advantages to this is that when a trader is tr trying to interact with the Bancor network, that central BNT send receive is now obfuscated. If you want to buy Chainlink with ETH, you send ETH and you receive Chainlink and there is no token transfer in the middle. However, the BNT transfer is still virtualized. So there is a significant gas savings associated with this. 50% of the entire Bancor protocol is BNT, and the other 50% is a giant bucket filled with various amounts of our other 150-ish whitelisted assets. So now there's a billion dollars in Bancor, and a trader wants to make a swap. How does it work? A trader provides their token of choice and then requests a token from Bancor. The amount they provide is then added to the Omnipool, and a virtualized trade is made using BNT as collateral. Then the token that the trader requested is given to them directly. This method of virtualized trades using a single universal token as collateral is unique to Bancor, and it makes the tokens that users stake very, very capital efficient. In summary, tens of thousands of users will deposit billions of dollars in assets to Bancor. Each user only needs to provide one kind of token, and Bancor accepts about 150 different types of tokens as of April 2022. The Bancor protocol then matches all those assets with BNT. When a trader goes to swap from one token to another, they simply input any of the 150 different whitelisted assets and then Bancor uses its reserves of BNT to check the value of the trader's payment, and then issues them the token of their choice. BNT providers get 50% of the trade fee because half of the currency is in BNT. Token providers get the other 50% of the trade fee because the other half of the currency is in their token. And traders get a really good rate because of how capital efficient the Bancor protocol is. In our next video, we will discuss what capital efficiency is, how other DEXs hurt traders and liquidity providers through capital inefficiency, and why Bancor is the simplest, safest, and best place to earn yield on your assets.